so this uh, radio station uh, has been here almost 100 years. Uh, it's 97 years old, and the, the machine we're going to run today is what you can see behind me. Uh, here is the uh, heart of the transmitter. That is the Alexanderson alternator, uh, a gearbox, and a motor that will drive the alternator. That's a 500 horsepower motor, so it's a, it's a lot of power. Um, to control the alternator, we have a control panel, and the control panel has a lot of uh, levers, uh, switches, uh, etc., that we use to, to maneuver this machine. Uh, behind the operator panel, we have a relay corridor. Uh, it's a set of control relays that is used to control, mainly control the speed of the motor and to get the Morse signal out onto the antenna. And behind the relay corridor is an area with uh, auxiliary machinery. Uh, basically, the three pieces you are seeing there are uh, liquid resistors used to control uh, and reduce the starting current to the motor. Uh, behind the liquid resistors are uh, rectifiers, uh, water pumps, etc. So we're gonna uh, start them up here very soon. And in the opposite end of this uh, building, uh, over in the corner, is the magnetic amplifier. That's where the radio signal is being amplified and sent out to the antenna. Um, so before uh, we can start up machine, we have to do some preparation. Uh, first of all, we had to connect this machine to the power supply, 50,000 volt, 50 kilovolt here out on the field. Um, so we connect the 50,000 volt to a transformer that will give us, provide us with 2,300 volt, two phase. And that is because uh, this machine was built in America. And in the 1920s in America, they were using two-phase electric, uh, electricity, and not three-phase. So we are supplied with 2,300 volt two-phase. And um, we have also checked all the lubrication in the alternator, the motor, on all the auxiliary uh, equipment. And we have also connected the uh, amplifier to the antenna. So the antenna and the amplifier is now connected. Um, and we have also connected uh, the machine to 2,300 volts. So that means that we are ready to, to start up the machine. Um, so I will ask Anders to step over to the emergency switch and I will turn on the main power. We do this as a, a safety precaution. So I will close the low voltage release and turn on the main power. And now you can hear that we have an alarm bell that rings. And the alarm bell is telling us that we have no oil pressure and we have no uh, water cooling. So I can turn off this clock temporarily and we can start the water cooling system. And that means that Anders and I have to walk down to the water pump. We have two water pumps to choose from. Uh, one is in operation and one is a uh, backup. So we will use pump number one. Anders will start to open up bleeder valve. That's fine, Anders. And uh, fill up the house of the pump with city water. And we are looking for bubbles in, uh, in the pipe.
now the pump is full with water. We close that. And Anders will turn on. It's a Y star connection, meaning that Anders first have to rev up the motor and then switch over to Y. And now the pump is running. And now comes the toughest job uh, during the whole startup, and that is to open up the main valve for the water circulation. It's a heavy job this day here. We have uh, weather is around 25 degrees. Uh, it's, it's very humid. We may have thunderstorms this afternoon. And we are aiming at two bar circulation pressure, which we have reached now. Anders is closing the city water, and now we will check the liquid resistor. The, the first liquid resistor here is called start uh, liquid resistor. This is directly connected in line with the supply, electrical supply, to the to the main motor, and this is used to uh, reduce the load on the motor when we start it up. This other resistor is called a controlling resistor and it's used to set the correct frequency once the machine is running. And this is connected in parallel to the start of the system. And Anders, he looks happy with the liquid uh, level. So now we will move over to the relay corridor. And before we can start the main motor, we would have to start up the circulation in both liquid resistors using a piece of wood <clears throat> from 1920. That's all we, this is, this is technology from 1920. Uh, and Anders is using protective gloves because uh, the contactor has 400 volts uh, very close to your fingers. So. So we can turn the clock back on again and we get an alarm telling us that we have no oil pressure. So now we have to start uh, an uh, auxiliary oil pump. And the oil pump is providing oil pressure to the alternator and to the gearbox. And by that we are ready to start the main motor. And I will ask Anders to go to the emergency stop. And I will turn on the main motor. Now you can immediately see that the motor is starting to rotate. Uh, we have about 230 amps uh, to the motor right now. So the motor is revving up slowly. And as the motor rev is revving up, uh, the oil pressure will also be building up automatically. So we will have an alarm here in a while about high oil pressure. And that's when Anders will turn on the auxiliary oil pump. So the energy consumption right now that is going to the motor is equivalent to how much electricity you need to heat up 25 villas in the middle of the winter in Sweden. So this is a lot of energy. <clears throat> we are watching the amp meter. Uh, we have about 200 amps. That was the signal. Uh, 
Uh, we will wait for the amperage to go down to around 100 amps before we can move on to the next step, and that is to turn on two rectifiers. The rectifiers will convert uh, or will provide 500 volt uh, DC current uh, as well as 125 to 50 volt DC current that we use to, to control uh, the machine. We are at 125 amps. And there we reached 100. Anders will now close the knife switch that provides 500 volt to the transductors. The transductors are now saturated, meaning that the motor will get full speed. And you can hear the motor is revving up uh, much quicker now. At the same time, he's lowering, uh, or actually he's, he's uh, raising the water level inside the liquid resistor to lower the, the resistance. And he's doing the same thing with the control resistor. And Anders has also closed the knife switch for 250 volt that will magnetize the alternator uh, to create a magnetic field uh, that has the frequency of 17,200 hertz, which is our transmission frequency. So we have a, a dial that where we can see the frequency. We are very close to uh, 17,200. We are looking at all the gauges. We want the motor to have around 2,000 volts. Ganska nöjda. Ja. Ska vi lägga till fläkten? Så so before we can move on, we have to start up a cooling fan. Uh, Anders will go down and do that. The cooling fan uh, will uh, provide compressed air to the main relays in the relay corridor to blow out any any spark, or the relays will will melt from the high uh, load. And the fan will make a lot of noise, so it will get very noisy here in, in, in the room. Can you add a little until? Start with something, right? The loop. Ja, en till. Ska vi lägga till antennen? Så Anders vill eh, connect the antenna. Uh, the alternator with the antenna. You can see the knife switch is closing behind there. And now we can uh, see if we have any power out to the antenna. We have about 50 amps to the antenna. Have a little bit low frequency. Oh. What have we done? Oh, 
bättre nu. Så vi gett about 60 amps till the antenna now, which is acceptable. Jag tror vi lägger på remsa. Tycker du det? Ja. Så vi vill starta en automatic strip. This strip is used to identify us. Uh, we are sending a set of uh, V, V as in Victor, followed by uh, DE, which means from in French. And then we are sending the call sign for this station, which is SAQ, SAQ. So this, this station is the only station in the world with this call sign. So this tells us that, uh, hello, This is SRQ sending. we have reached uh, uh, a, a rough tuning uh, level. We're going to do some fine tuning in, in a couple of minutes. Uh, in the meantime, I can uh, talk a little bit about our transmissions. Uh, last transmission made from here was October 24, 2020. So that was uh, nine months ago. So we scheduled two transmissions a year. Uh, normally, and that is on Alexander Sunday, uh, early July, as well as on Christmas Eve, December 24. And sometimes we are also transmitting on uh, the UN Day, October 24, which we did last year. But for different reasons, we had no transmission on Christmas last year. So we are 
are tuning uh, first we are we are tuning the speed of the motor and the speed of the motor will directly uh, adjust the frequency and now we are tuning the antenna to get as much power out to the antenna as possible Fortsätta så Anders. Ja, ja. Ja, den är, den är bra där. Hur ser motorspänningen ut om du håller in en knapp? Där ja. ja, den ligger ju perfekt. Ja, nöjda. Nöjda. Rensa. This machine was one of two machines. Uh, originally, another machine was also in this uh, uh, room, and they were run uh, uh, one at a time. And while the one was run, the other one was being serviced. And they were run on a regular basis for 30 years, from 1925. But soon after this machine was installed, the first shortwave transmitters uh, came and uh, one could establish a reliable connection over the Atlantic using shortwave. But not 1924, it took a little bit later. Uh, in, uh, during the Second World War, uh, Sweden uh, bought uh, its first submarine and it was discovered that this machine could send information to a submarine without the submarine having to come up to the surface. And uh, so, so this machine was used until the 60s, sending information to the Swedish submarines. And from 1960s and onwards, until the 80s, the machine was only used very sporadically. The other machine, uh, machine number one, was removed here in 1960 to give room for more shortwave equipment.
time we have a translation, we also receive a lot of listener reports from uh, listeners all over the world. Uh, last Alexander Sunday, we had over 600 reports coming in. These reports are extremely important to us because they are telling us how far we have reached, how was the signal, and it's, it's a fantastic, uh, very exciting to see all the efforts our listeners have made to receive us. Uh, to receive SAQ in Europe, it's, it's fairly easy, but as, as further away from Europe you get, the harder it gets. And you need to be very, uh, very good at, at radio and, and understanding how to receive the radio waves at this frequency. So we are very happy for listener reports from, from all our listeners. So we are getting close to the time where we're going to send a message. So we are waiting another couple of minutes before that. You can see on the, on the chat on YouTube that uh, listeners from all over the world are receiving us right now. So two minutes remaining until we're going to send out the message.
Tolla. the hook.
and that completes our message to the world. Uh, our message this year uh, is that we are celebrating 25 years as an association. The Alexander Grindleton Friendship Association was founded 25 years ago, 1996. And this is also the year where this building got listed as a protected building in Sweden. A very important step towards the listing on the World UNESCO World Heritage List in 2004. So by that uh, we have sent our message and now we are ready to turn off our transmitter. Uh, basically doing the same thing we did starting it up about backwards. Uh, we will start by disconnecting the 250 volt and 500 volt switches. And the motor will lose speed because we have no speed control. And then we will turn off the main motor switch. And we will turn on the rectifiers for 500 volt and for 125, 250 volts. Um, we would have to lower the gates in the two liquid resistors down to the bottom again to get full resistance. Very good, and we will turn off the fan. Give some uh, peace and quiet here in the room. Uh, now the motor is revving down, and at a certain point, it will give us an alarm for oil pressure. And I will turn on the auxiliary oil pump. Uh, it takes about nine minutes for the motor to stop. Uh, so I will talk a little bit about our association. We are 650 members. So we're quite a big association, uh, many Swedish members, but uh, more than 100 members from foreign countries. Uh, the Alexander Association are all volunteers, so we are here because we love this place. Uh, we have different backgrounds. Uh, I'm a mechanical engineer. Some people have worked at uh, the nuclear power plant in Ringhals. Some people have worked at Swedish Telecom, etc. So we have all different inputs. And we are here to learn as much as possible about this fantastic machine. Uh, also to uh, maintain the machine, to make uh, sure it operates the way it should, and to pass on this knowledge to future generations. So we have courses. For people who are interested, we have courses how this machine works, how to operate this machine, how to run it. Um, and we are also working very close together with the uh, World Heritage Grindleton radio station uh, who owns this place and runs this place, uh, operates this place. We are just here as volunteers to, to take care of this machine. So this cooperation between us and, and the World Heritage is, is very important. Uh, there are a lot of uh, activities uh, here at this radio station now for the whole family, not just this old machine. Uh, so this is really worthwhile visiting. Uh, there are so many interesting stories about this machine and messages that was sent. Um, 
during Second World War, uh, this machine uh, could uh, send information to Swedish submarines. And during an exercise in uh, the ocean outside of Gothenburg in the mid-40s, uh, the Swedish submarine Ulven got lost. It disappeared. It couldn't be contacted. So they decided to send messages from this transmitter to Ulven and see if, if uh, they can get any, any reply. Uh, however, uh, the submarine was found several days later, unfortunately, with all people killed because they had hit a, a mine. So it all exploded. So everyone died. Uh, a much nicer story uh, is, is about uh, a young sailor from, from, from the west coast here who was uh, sailing across to the Americas. And he had his girlfriend in Sweden and they, they wanted to get married. But he had second thoughts because he thought, maybe I'm too much away from her. So when he came over to, to, to America, he sent her a telegram to call off the marriage. Uh, but she didn't want to cancel the marriage. So, so she returned a message sending, sent over this machine that she still loved him and she wanted to get married. So he changed his mind. He came back and they married and they lived happy forever and ever. <laughs> So there are so many fantastic stories about, about this, this machine. So by that, we would like to thank you all for watching. And of course, we would like to uh, thank you everyone who has been listening. And we are really looking forward to all your reports. Uh, and uh, from Grimmett on Radio Station, uh, thank you very much. And see you soon again. Bye bye.